All right, so let's talk about how to fill out the class attributes section of a class definition. This will be the first part of what you actually put into a class as you are defining it. So at the top of the, cla at, of the class definition, you should actually be putting the um, class attributes section before any methods or anything like that. But yeah, we're just focusing on how to properly define all of the attributes of a class. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, 10.4 from the focus on the concepts part of this uh, chapter. So the first thing I want to talk about is the member variable of a class. Now a member variable is going to represent an attribute of the object that the class will create. It represents some fundamental property of that object. For the rectangle class that I introduced in the last video and that we will be uh, filling out a little bit more of, uh, the member variables will hold the length and the width of that class. Now, typically a uh, class will define one or more of these variables, but you have to declare them using the keyword private. You have to use private, not dim, not public. You have to use private for these because you want these variables hidden from the application slash other objects that might be interacting with objects of the class you're using. Uh, the application cannot or should not be able to interact with these member variables willy-nilly. Uh, you don't want them to be able to get them, you know, get whatever value or set whatever value as much as it wants because sometimes, you know, the application or other objects might mess with values that you don't want to be messed with, or they might set them to bad values that could completely destroy your results and maybe cause runtime errors or something like that. Y you could run into logic errors as well from people setting values of member variables to things you don't want them to be. So you have to protect those member variables. You have to keep them from being directly accessible fr uh, from the application by using the keyword private. Uh, now, uh, what I should note is that when you have a private member variable like this, those variables are always accessible within the class methods. They're just not accessible outside of the class, not accessible from the form or from other objects outside of the class. Um, so previously, when we talked about class level variables and we were creating them in our main form, uh, when we define them using private and then the name of the variable and all that kind of stuff, uh, those are actual member variables of the form main class. So I think that's kind of interesting, but those private variables will not be accessible to any classes you make. And that is good. They should not be accessible outside of their class. Only the objects of that class itself are, oh, when an object is instantiated from a class, it, that object should be the only thing that can mess with its member, its own member variables. No one else should be able to mess with those member variables. It's really important. However, sometimes those variables do need to be interacted with. And in that case, we can create public properties that provide uh, protected access to those private member variables. Uh, and those actually create the, the, the actual visual basic properties that we have seen before. So we can use these properties to not just allow any type of access to those variables, but we can use them to determine whether the, you know, other application or other objects in the application can see what contents are in those variables or modify the contents of those variables. We can direct how they modify those contents in order to prevent invalid values from being set into uh, those member variables. For example, if we want to prevent a rectangle object from getting a negative length or a negative width or something, we can specify that using these public properties right here. So that is really, really important. And we set those properties to be public so that the property itself is exposed to the application, which means that you can actually access that property from elsewhere in the application and try to get and set the value of the property. 
but the member variable itself is private so that you can't do it directly to the variable. You can only interact with the property and then the property will have controlled access, I guess give you controlled access to the private member variable indirectly. You're kind of doing it with the, the property acts as a proxy or like a middleman or something like that. The property takes the value that you want to set into the member variable and it looks at it real carefully and makes sure everything is okay. And if it is okay, then it can actually set it in. Or when you are trying to access the value of that member variable, the property looks at you and makes sure that you are allowed to access that value before it then sort of passes it around. Or it might even do some extra calculations or something like that before actually giving you that internal value. So those are all options with the public properties right here. Um, and I should say that the properties are actually a form of procedure in a way. They just don't act like they're actual procedures, but the properties are a collection of procedures that give, that um, tell you how you can get the value of that member variable and how you can set the value of that member variable. So they are procedures that masquerade as regular properties. I mean, that's what all the properties are. They, they're all a collection of procedures. Um, they just look like not procedures, which is really interesting. So properties can be read-only, which means that you can only read the value of that pri private member variable that's associated with the property, but you can't actually write to the member variable. A property can also be write-only, so you can only write to that member variable, but you can't actually read the value that you have just written or the value that was there before you wrote. Uh, Properties can also be neither read-only nor write-only. So that means you can read to or write from the member variable, although the ability to read to or write from might still be somewhat limited based on the implementation of how the property allows you to read or write like that. An example is the length property of a string, right? It is a property, uh, but it's a read-only property. You can't actually change the length of the string without um, changing the actual characters that are contained within the string. If you try to set the length property by itself to some value, it's not going to be allowed. And it'll be a um, syntax error. So the length property is read-only. You can see what the length is, but you can't actually set the length. The only way you can change the length of a string is to add or remove characters from that string. So here is the syntax for a public procedure property. This will take place indented inside of the class statement. So inside of the class statement, um, you will have uh, the word public, which means that it is visible from elsewhere in the application. It's visible outside of the definition of that class. Uh, you can put read-only or write-only if you want. You don't have to, but you can if you want your property to be read-only or write-only. And then you use the keyword property. You'll put the property name in Pascal case, typically. Sometimes you have a parameter list, but that's not always the case. Uh, as data type, you know, that is the type of property that will be given back to you. Um, and then inside of the property, if you will allow that property to be read, you'll have this sort of get statement block right here. So you'll write the keyword get, and then any instructions that are necessary, which typically you won't need anything special, and then you'll return the private variable that you're associating with the property name. And then unindented, you'll say end get. And then a similar thing for the set part. So if you plan to allow your or other people to set a value into the private variable. If you plan to do that, then you'll write set, but you'll actually put this um, these parentheses with the parameter value as data type. You only put value as data type in here. Um, you put any instructions that might be necessary uh, inside of the set uh, part right here. Maybe these are instructions that are necessary to make sure that the value is valid or something like that, if you need that. And then you can put 
either like nested inside of if statements up there or at the very end or something, you can put private variable equals the value that was sent in here. You can also put in default values if the value that was given to you is bad. Um, that will show some examples of that in just a second. But then once you finish writing your set statement, you unindent, you put end set right here, and then you unindent, you put end property at the very end, and that is how you make one particular property that controls access to a private variable. All right, so here's one example of a read-only property. Um, this property does not allow the application or other objects outside of the particular instance here to set this uh, you know, set a value for this double bonus uh, member variable. It can only uh, get the value of double bonus right here. Double bonus will probably be calculated using a method, which we'll talk about later on, but the actual um, getting that value is going to be you know, it's only going to be restricted to getting the value, not actually setting the value. The calculations will be handled by the object itself. So, uh, we have private double bonus as double right here. This is our member variable. It is private, and it should be private, because we want this property to be read-only. We don't want the user setting it by themselves. We don't want some disgruntled... Uh, let's say manager to set double bonus to be zero if the employee was supposed to get $10,000 as a bonus or something like that. That would be awful. So we want that setting to be restricted to things that are defined in this object so we can, you know, we can implement the proper safeguards for that. So all we want to, the user to be able to do willy-nilly like this is to see what value is contained in double bonus. So yeah, private double bonus as double. This is the private member variable. It is completely safe from outside tampering. And then we expose it using the public read-only property bonus right here, which allows us to uh, allows the you know other objects in the application to see the value of double bonus. Um, we say public read-only property bonus as double. And then inside of the get block of the property procedure, all we need to put is return double bonus. Then that just shows them what double bonus really is. If we wanted to format it as a string, we could make the property um, as string and then uh, return double bonus dot two string or something like that. But what we probably would want to do is keep this as a double and then let the user format it as a string. That, would, that actually would be a lot better. We just want to give them the number, and then the user themselves can choose to do what they want with it. Or, you know, elsewhere in the application, you can choose what you want to do with it, like displaying um, a string, displaying it as a string instead of just leaving it as a double. So you really want to keep this type right here the same as the associated type with the member variable in most cases. Uh, there's probably not many where you would want to change the type up like that. But yeah, that is how you make a read-only property. And most uh, get blocks like this will just be a simple return statement just like that most of the time. So that's really helpful. All right, here's an example of a write-only property. So we have our private uh, member variable. This is decimal annual sales, uh, which is a decimal, of course. And then the property right here. It's a public write-only property. There's no get at all. We're not allowing of other uh, objects to actually look at the value of decimal annual sales. They're only able to set the value of decimal annual sales. Why you would do that, I don't know. Maybe it makes sense in the context of this uh, program that's being written. Maybe um, you know you are putting in your value and then that value just kind of gets shipped off to accounting or whatever, and they're the ones who can truly see the whole thing. I, I really don't know. But um, yeah, if you ever do want to make a write-only property, this is how you would do it. So public write-only property, and then the name of the property right here in Pascal case as decimal. You put a set block with a parameter value as decimal, and then you set the member variable equal to value. And that's what most of your set blocks are going to look like. You just set the variable to the value, unless you need to do 
checking for invalid values or something like that, but you'll see just this simple set thing a lot of the time. And then you end set, and then you end property, just like that. All right, so we have our rectangle class again that I introduced in the last video. Um, I didn't fill anything in here yet, but now I think it's time to start working on some properties. So a rectangle is defined by its length and width entirely. Um, because it's a rectangle, we know that the angles are all 90 degrees. We don't need to worry about anything like that. We just worry about the, nth, the, uh, the length and the width. Uh, any other information would be superfluous. So because the, the length and the width are what define a rectangle, those are really good candidates for private member variables right here. So I'll put in private uh, int length uh, as integer and private int width as integer, just like that. Now these are private variables. We don't want any other objects changing the length and the width um, as much as they want. For one, that could be bad because we want some amount of consistency in our calculations and all that kind of stuff. But for two, we also wouldn't want someone accidentally setting the length to be negative one, for example. And this could be a big consideration if we are working in a team and we, you know, we want to make sure that the uh, anyone that we're working with isn't able to accidentally set these values to anything weird or bad or harmful or anything like that. So that's why we want to protect access to these member variables. We still want them to be able to set the length and the width of the rectangle. We also still want them to be able to uh, see what those values are. We just want to prevent them from setting those lengths and widths to invalid, uh, invalid measurements like negative one. You can't have a negative length or width for a rectangle. What is also something that would be nice is for us to have a sort of default value of zero for the length and the width. So we can also sort of enforce that if we are given an invalid value for length and width. And zero kind of might be a good value to show anyone who's working with our rectangle class right here, hey, either um, we haven't yet set a good value for the length or the width, or we accidentally tried to put in a bad value and now everything looks like zero, so something has gone wrong and it's time for us to figure out what has gone wrong. So let's uh, fill out these properties now. All right, I'll start with the length property right here. Uh, public property length as integer and the property just like that um and we get this red mark right here uh we'll get the syntax error saying that property without read only or write only must provide both a get and a set and that's fine that's just visual studio jumping the gun because i haven't finished writing this whole thing out Let's start with the get. Um, get is going to be really easy because we don't need to do anything special. We can just give them back the integer value of the length. Not a string or anything like that. I'm not converting it to a string. I'm giving them back an integer value because likely this value is going to be used in calculations in some sort. So let's not do that. But I'll type in get like this. And actually Visual Basic fills out everything for me. So the get, the end get, the set, and the end set. So in get, get will be super easy, and this will probably be most of your uh, contents for your get block right here. I'll just return int length, just like that. And that's how easy it is to actually make it so that the user can see your int, you know, see the value that's contained within int length like this. For set, it'll be a little bit different. Um, what I want to do is make sure that they can't set negative values into the um, actual int length uh, variable right here. So I'm going to check for that. 
if the value is greater than zero, then I will put int length equals value, just like that. Um, however, I don't want to leave it right here because in a set, uh, in set right here, you probably should have something get put into int length no matter what. So I'll put an else statement. So when the value is zero or less, I'll just put int length equals zero. Just like that. Now what we have is a default value that we are given if the user tries to put an invalid value like negative one inside of our length property. Another thing you could do instead of having this big if statement like this is you could use um, the math the max function in the math library. So um, int length equals math.max um, zero value. And what this does is essentially it checks to see which is larger, zero or the value that the user put in. If zero is larger, that means that the user gave a negative value, right? So we would just want to put zero in as our default value. Otherwise, we would want to put in value because value is larger than zero, which means that we haven't given a valid length for our rectangle. And if they're the same, it doesn't matter because no matter what, zero is getting put into int length. But yeah, this will either put in zero or it will put in the value that the user gave us, depending on which is larger. If the value is larger than zero, we will get the value in int length. Otherwise, we will get zero in int length. So that's a uh, clever way of doing that. Um, this is specifically good for numeric values like this when we're just testing to see whether the value is positive. Um, you may not be able to do something like this for every single possible check for invalid uh, values given by the user. For example, if you have a string uh, private member variable and the pro as the property you're trying to filter out any u any user values that start with the letter a um, you want to be able to use something like math.max here you'd have to use the if statement type of thing that i showed off before all right and then very briefly i made a copy of the length property and i just replaced length with width and int length with int width so those are the two properties for our um, two member variables for the rectangle right here. So that is how you would create attributes for a class, um, attributes in this case that are both readable and writable. All right, well, that is how to uh, create attributes for your class. So defining the member variables and then creating properties that allow you to control access to those variables. So I cannot express how important it is for you to use public properties with private member variables like this. Whenever you um, are creating a class, you always want to make sure that anything that comes from outside of the class that you're creating in terms of interaction goes through the property rather than the actual private member variable. So any values being given to your object that interacts with those private member variables should go through your properties. And anytime someone accesses, uh, you know, is able to look at or work with data from that private member variable, it should somehow get routed through the property or another method, but we'll talk about that later. But when they're, when they're talking to your object and getting a value from a property, uh, it should go through the property, not through the actual member variable itself. So private member variables, public properties. That's really, really important. 